Hi, Tim and uh, Dominic. You're the designers of the Greater London Agriculture, one of the Rethink 2025 competition winners. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about who you are and uh, what you do the rest of the time when you're not submitting for awards? Uh, I'm, I'm Tim Rother and normally I'm a part two architectural assistant uh, currently at AOC Architecture and in in my spare time I, I do like to eat and I occasionally like to cycle as well. Um, How about you John? Uh, yeah I'm also a part two so we both graduated from our masters last year. I was at the Bartlett and Tim was at the London School of Architecture. Um, so now I'm working at Witherford Watson Man. Uh, yeah, and um, we both know each other from Sheffield. So we we studied our undergrads there together and we, we've we had a, a kind of like combined sort of a working practice together since then. We've entered lots of competitions together and we also work on lots of kind of research projects together. So it's just, an, is it like an informal thing or is it... Have you got a name? Well, I mean, there's always a desire to actually get something formal going, but we kind of just, um, while we're both still working in practice, and um, yeah, I think that there's always been an intention to try and get get something real done, and we're kind of trying to push for that a lot more now that we've finished our master's degrees. So for the moment, you're just Tim and Dom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tim is very keen on a name, but I'm, <laughs> I, I'm yet to find one that I, I'm happy with. So go on, tell me what Greater London Agriculture is in a nutshell. Um, okay, well, essentially, uh, sort of Greater London Agriculture is a city region master plan that enables the de development of uh, an abundant landscape of growing and eating spaces around the city. And um, the idea is that by integrating local, seasonal and regenerative food growing within the existing built environment, we can be begin to divest uh, from a global industrialised food system and allowing the Earth's ecosystems to recover, its biodiversity to flourish and ultimately, and almost incidentally, uh, reducing the likelihood of future pandemics. So um, I've been looking at it this morning and it, and it presents a, a vast map of the metropolitan area and highlights both existing spaces and buildings as well as um, new ones that you're kind of identifying to, to transform this into this kind of growing landscape that you're, you're talking about. So um, why did you decide that, that food, food production was the thing to focus on now, like in the next five years, I suppose? Um, well, we, we sort of wanted to to go go to the root of the problem uh, as it as it is kind of rather than um, in a way putting a, a sort of plaster on a on a, a problem. We wanted to try to address the very core of it, which we both after um, a few weeks of research at the start of the competition, because it's a um, Tim is, as you mentioned, is particularly interested in food and food production. Um, we spent a long time researching the kind of the the way that pandemics have historically come about and and some of the reasons why this current pandemic has come about and uh, after a lot of research realized that it was um it's it's the way that food is produced consumed and the the whole kind of um um industrial uh um infrastructure of agriculture that has has led in part to this kind of issue that we're facing now so that's why we we decided to to approach the problem from from food as opposed to to more of a kind of band-aid type solution yeah so so then um how did you go about the map i suppose i mean you're presenting this map and then alongside a sort of a visual of how it might look sort of on the ground in in mm. a certain spot but um how did you go about plotting the the different different sort of objects and pieces in the, in the landscape to join it all up? Um, well, Tim was very interested in um, doing a strategic proposal and we wanted to do some something within a city that we knew something about. And since we both spent a long time in London, it made sense to 
to pick London. But then London itself is such a vast kind of metropolitan region that we initially started thinking of smaller areas within the city and then decided that it made a lot of sense to use the Thames River from mm -hmm. its tributary to its estuary and study that whole kind of um, waterway as historically that's the way that lots of food and other items have come into the city. Do you want to say anything about that, Tim, as well? Uh, well, I think one thing that I found sort of particularly heartening doing the, sort of the mapping exercise, obviously we had existing and then elements of proposed, is that there is so much sort of already in, in London, there's sort of a whole map of London growing spaces with things like existing community orchards and some schools, for example, um, growing food for children to eat in the canteen. Um, it was sort of quite, yeah, it was it was an enjoyable experience to sort of find out what exactly was going on already. And then the idea of the scheme is essentially to sort of work with those and to develop it and sort of push them forwards. So do you want to talk a bit about what other ones you have? I know I know you've got um, an experimental seaweed farm in the estuary. Do you want to speak about some of the other ones that you've got? Yeah, so we we sort of, I mean, uh, we both cycled the the Thames quite a bit, and that's something we will continue to do. So it's it's about the the idea of those kind of more um, uh, agricultural or um, production based entities like the seaweed seaweed farm, but then it's also about um, more kind of ecological sites like marshlands, and then how you might have schools within them, new areas of uh, proposed forest land. And I think we, we wanted it to be not just about a kind of a solution that that um, resolved the problem, but also about um, re-engaging with the beauty of the Thames and its changing landscapes throughout. And that's why we highlighted lots of the brownfield sites that have a lot of uh, old kind of uh, post-industrial relics and things like that. And so, I think we wanted to to try and celebrate the beauty of the Thames as it is, rather than having a, a such a top down proposal of of lots of new things. So it's a mixture of what already exists and then new entities like the seaweed farms and uh, education and business hubs um, within that existing landscape. So because actually the proposal isn't just about these um new kind of landscape changes it's also about logistics and, and you mentioning education why did you feel that that was so crucial to have alongside the sort of uh, other infrastructure side of it well i think it's important to sort of essentially bring everyone along with you and for example if you're sort of looking at institutions like schools or hospitals, there's so much potential for them to do things in, with the, within this remit on sort of existing land and sort of for the patients, for the pupils. Uh, and I guess it's, it's essentially trying to sort of bring in sort of, sort of circular economy principles um, to make it more, more than just sort of a beautiful space to be. It's about something that can sort of work and we're sort of obviously seeing sort of particular sort of economic issues the country's having because of the lockdown and to try and sort of build a resilience in the city and in the in, in the country and in the world hopefully where you can sort of um sort of push on forward and sort of make make the world a more beautiful space while also making it sort of um integral to people's livelihoods and well-being yeah because you you actually oh Sorry, you actually said um, in your proposal, it's just like this first piece, basically, in a in a global change. Yeah, and I guess in that sense, it's it's about education in that way as well, about um, bringing piece, people closer to the places that food is produced and having a greater diversity in the types of food that's produced and the, the places that it comes from. So having more kind of locally sourced, smaller um, enterprises that, produce food and having other types of in, um, business and education close to that so that people have a relationship to the way that food is made as as it historically was um, in places like London. So um, in, in, one, in your visual you've got a drawing where 
Uh, you've got sort of people going through the landscape and pigs in the um, like nearby. You think what how what are the barriers to getting this a scheme like this kind of implemented and sort of who's who's in charge, I suppose? Well, um, I think in, in terms of implementation, I mean, we're, we are really passionate about this idea. And I, I think one one way that we th we could see this to go forward first is that we're, we're architects, not scientists or ecologists. So we would be really keen to try and um, collaborate with people in, in an academic field who have a greater understanding of this above our kind of three or four week period of reading scientific journals. And I think then from there, it's um, engaging with uh, larger bodies um, such as the World Health Organization and, and to, to try and talk about how you, how you might implement this kind of thing in it. And maybe um, I think it would be a sort of nodal kind of thing at first that would then spread throughout the city as opposed to a, a more kind of like top down or overall regeneration. Yeah, so something a bit like the bike scheme that started in Walthamstow mm. and it's kind of like expanded out from from a particular focus yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, and I think the the beauty of, of the map as well is that it shows that a lot of these things are already there. I mean, uh, we had to really distill the the existing growing spaces in the city of London or, or London, uh, the the region of London, because it made the map too busy. Because there's already so many of these kind of spaces and I think it's about connecting everything together and and highlighting that a lot of this already does exist. I think one of the interesting questions is also sort of one of funding. Uh, no expert on this personally, but I know there's a lot of there's work that Dark Matter um, Labs with Indy Joha, uh, they're doing that sort of trying to take uh, the sort of the costs and benefits of of greenery of trees, for example, and then sort of um, being able to account them and sort of making them accountable. And thereby, I think their argument was with with their proposal, which was slightly different, but then you can still sort of go to water companies and go, ah, well, if you grow X number of trees within this area, sort of surface runoff, et cetera, will reduce. And therefore you'll there'll be a saving of X pounds on your infrastructure. And therefore you should be able to get some funding from that and it's trying to sort of make things obvious and sort of make them um, easily sort of digestible. Great, well, I think that's probably a good place to leave it. So thank you very much, Tim and, and Dom and uh, well done again for, for your prize. Thanks. Thank you very much.